Today in class, we worked on Unit 7, Lesson 6, Homegrown Music Fest, where we continued examining quadratic patterns and looking at the second difference in those patterns. In the ready section of today's homework, we are asked to write and simplify an expression for the area of each figure. For the first example, we are given this larger rectangle, which has dimensions eight and a half, excuse me, eight X plus one feet by five X feet. And inside that larger rectangle, we have a smaller rectangle, which has dimensions three X plus one by X. In order to find the area of just this shaded portion, we are going to need to find the entire area of the larger rectangle, the area of the smaller rectangle, and subtract out the area of the smaller rectangle. The area of the larger rectangle is found by multiplying the length by the width. We first need to distribute the 5x to each of the terms inside the parentheses and we are left with 40x squared plus 5x square feet. For the smaller rectangle, again, we will multiply the length by the width. Again, we will use the distributive property to distribute the x to the 3x and the x to the 1 to get 3x squared plus x square feet. Next, we will subtract the smaller rectangle from the larger rectangle. We notice that the smaller rectangle is being subtracted, so we're going to have to distribute a negative one to each of the terms inside the parentheses. Negative one times three x squared and negative one times x. We are then left with two terms that are like terms, so we're going to need to simplify those. When we simplify our like terms that both have x squares, and we simplify our like terms that are x to the first power, we're left with the area of the shaded region only, which is 37x squared plus 4x square feet. In our second example, we are finding the area of a triangle. We know the formula for finding the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. We know that the base of our triangle is 10x minus 20, and the height of our triangle is 4x plus 6. First, we will need to multiply our two linear expressions in our numerator to get a trinomial, and then we will divide that by two. We will use the distributive property. We will dis distribute the first term in our first set of parentheses to each of the terms in our second set of parentheses. Then we will distribute the second term in our first set of parentheses to each of the terms in our second set of parentheses. When we do that, this is the product that we get. We notice that we have like terms here that we need to combine. It simplifies to this expression in our numerator. The entire numerator is being divided by two which means that each term in the numerator is being divided by 2. When we divide each of those terms by 2, we find that the area of the triangle is 20x squared minus 10x minus 60 units squared.
In the set section of today's homework, we are going to be using quadratic patterns to answer questions. In today's task, Homegrown Music Fest, you were given information about a changing ticket price and the effects of that change on the profit. In tonight's homework, we're going to examine a situation which is similar. A company collects data about their profit given certain prices for their baby shoes. When they charge $16 for a pair of baby shoes, they can make a profit of $651,000. When they charge $1 more, their profit will become $660,000. When they charge $2 more, so the shoes will now cost $18, their profit will become $667,000. What will their maximum profit be and how much should they charge for their baby shoes? If we put all of this information in a table, we'll be able to answer these questions a little easier. So what we notice is that when we increase the shoe price by $1 from $16 to $17 per pair, we increase our overall profit by $9,000. Yet when we increase the shoe price again by $1, now our overall profit is only increasing by $7,000, which is $2,000 less than the first $1 increase. If we expect this pattern to continue, by incre our overall profit increasing $2,000 less than the previous increase, then if we increase the shoe price to $19, we can expect a profit of $5,000 more than the profit that we anticipated for the shoe price of $18 per pair. Again, the next increase would then be expected to be a $3,000 increase and then a $1,000 increase, and then a $1,000 decrease. Now that we have our table filled in, we can see clearly that our maximum profit would be $667,000 and would occur when we charge $21 per pair for the shoes. In the go section of our homework, we are finding the x-intercepts from a table, a graph, and an equation. If we look first at the graph, we know that our x-intercepts are where the point where our function crosses the x-axis. What we also know about our x-intercepts is that our y values for all of our x-intercepts is going to be zero because the points are located on the x-axis. That means that we don't go anywhere on vertically to reach the points. If we look at these in terms of a table, again, we know that our y values are going to be zero for any x-intercepts, and we can clearly see from the table that our x-intercept here is 2, 0. And when we look at this in terms of an equation, Again, we know that our y value must be zero, so if we substitute our y variable with a zero and solve for x, we will get our x-intercept. 